Do I look good? Do I look good? I don't know how I look, but I just watched Monday Night Raw and I'm really excited because I wanted to watch it right after I made my video for Survivor Series and now I did. So let's just jump into it with the fact that Randy Orton opened the show and it was amazing because he was interrupted by Rhea Ripley and she was like, I don't know if you have noticed, I see that you want to run against the bloodline but the new force around here is the judgment day and they're controlling everything and randy orton was like look i was watching the show and i see that you were calling the shots and rhea ripley said this rhea ripley said that mommy said this mommy said that but i want to tell you something that is home and that was so cool man and after that dominic and jd mcdonough attacked randy from behind to assert dominance of the Judgment Day, but Randy Orton was like, Nana! He's, he's not like LA Knight, but he was Nana, and he attacked back and basically he RKO'd JD, and he was like, later tonight, Dominic, you and me, one on one, let's go. And I'm gonna talk about that later. After that, we had a tag team turmoil match, which is probably my favorite type of match, considering that for me, Battle Royale does not cut it, exactly, for tag teams at least. Every time there was a tag team turmoil match, I was invested in. And this time, the tag team turmoil started with the Alpha Academy, which was this time Akira Tozawa and Otis, versus DIY. DIY won. And after that, In The Share came out. And DIY won by sneak up uh, roll up or I don't know how you phrase it but basically Veer was shocked and surprised by the roll up of Johnny Gargano or whatever and Diamond Mine came out and somehow they snuck up the victory on DIY uh, with the finisher of the rolling meatball or whatever the finisher of the Brutus Creed is incredibly dangerous finisher by the way The New Day came out Basically, they lost as well because, yeah, the new guys, Diamond Mine, yeah. And the last challenge for the Diamond Mine was, should I say the Creed Brothers, actually? Yeah, let's say the Creed Brothers. The Creed Brothers, after that, had to deal with Imperium. And I'm surprised that they won over Imperium. But I suspect that they won because they actually injured Giovanni Vinci with that meatball finisher. But I don't know. In the end, Creed Brothers won. I'm actually excited for them. I'm really looking forward to see what's gonna happen. And basically, with winning that tag team turmoil match, they're challenging the Judgment Day for the titles, uh, which is gonna happen, I don't know, sometime soon. After that, we had Ivor versus Big Bronson Reed. And um, honestly, it was not the most interesting matchup ever. So, we're gonna talk about something else. Moving on. We had a Nia Jax versus Zoe Stark matchup because basically in the back Nia Jax was like Zoe, you were close but not close enough and all of that stuff. I don't know why I'm imp doing impressions of other wrestlers. I should totally stop doing this but you get the point. And basically they had that little matchup and of course Nia Jax won with her devastating finisher where she sits on her opponent and uh, she got the victory, 1-2-3, which is a little bit devastating indeed for the future of Zoe Stark, but I think we're gonna be fine with it. After that, a match for the women's tag team titles, uh, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, which are the current champions, versus Tegan Knox and Natalia, who won last week uh, the Fatal 4-Way match, whatever. And uh, when that match started, I was, I was thinking, if Tegan Knox and Natalia wins, it's gonna be a major demotion for these titles because I have nothing against Tegan Knox and Natalia, and I'm not a big fan of Chelsea Green and Piper Niven as well, but Chelsea Green and Piper Niven at least are trying to do something with the title. They're going to NXT, they're going to Raw, they're trying to be everywhere, they're you know, putting interesting costumes, they're trying to say interesting stuff, and yeah, but Tegan Knox and Natalia are not really a presence anywhere so yeah the match ended with Piper Niven demolishing basically 
Tegan Knox with her devastating finisher where she just does a crossbody and that's it. They retained. The last match for the night, Dominic Mysterio versus Randy Orton, basically Randy Orton's first match since year and a half, 1v1, all of that stuff, it was amazing. It was not a squash match, but it was kind of a squash match, we saw everything that Randy usually does, the, the throw on the table, the vintage Randy Orton, the RKO, as I was expecting a legitimate RKO, not just out of nowhere RKO, I was expecting the prep RKO, but Dominic escaped that one, so yeah, Randy Orton won of course, and I'm really excited to see uh, how Randy Orton is gonna cut the promo next week and Judgment Day is gonna be like, hey Randy, we're back here again, and all of that stuff. Last but not least, the return of CM Punk. Everybody wanted to see CM Punk return, now everybody wanted to hear what he's gotta say, and are we surprised or not, but he cut basically the same promo as in AEW when he returned and basically he didn't mention anything about AEW, basically he just mentioned that he was somewhere because he was saying something along the lines that uh, once upon a time a wise man told me that I need to get somewhere else in order to start appreciating what I have right here and basically he mentioned that he was somewhere else but nothing more and uh, yeah it, it was just a feel good promo because he was basically saying that he's back home and he belonged there and all of that stuff nothing too dramatic I was not expecting actually nothing anything too dramatic but I was kind of expecting I don't know why I expect this from WWE, I don't ever believe that they will do that, but I was expecting Punk to bring that red bag with the crossed AW championship and do something with it, either burn it or just, I don't know, destroy it, I don't know, do something with it, it would be funny. At the same time, it's gonna put a spotlight on AEW, but that's good. That's good WWE because you know very well the competition builds better products. Because if you put a spotlight on AEW, people will go watch AEW. AEW should become better. And if it doesn't become better, people will understand that WWE is the best place to watch wrestling. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think that. WWE is the best place to watch wrestling, don't get me wrong, I just enjoy WWE more, personally. I don't blame anyone who enjoys AW more, it's personal preference of course, that's why there are 2, 3, 5 companies out there that are offering some shtick so that everyone is happy. With that being said, if I was to rate, uh, I'm out of bread guys, I'm getting old, how can I run every day, work out every day? And I'm getting out of breath when I record a goddamn video. Am I getting too much hyped up? Do you guys can see if I'm too hyped up? Please tell me if I'm too hyped up to stop hyping myself up because it's getting ridiculous how I'm getting out of breath every time. So if I was to rate Monday Night Rollins, I would have given it 9.5 out of 10. 10, not because of anything else, but because the tag team championship match for the women was not built up. I didn't just want to see a match for the titles. I wanted this match to build up. I wanted to see some drama. I wanted to see some barking at each other. I wanted to see some backstage fight. I wanted to see some prep for the championships and that's why I'm taking 0.5 out of the final score. Besides that, everything was perfect. Like the Survivor Series, like you can't ask for anything else. You, the first hour even was commercial free, which I didn't feel it because I was watching it, like a recording of it, but for if I was watching it live, it would have been perfect. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'm gonna see you soon. Peace.